What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out. Ah, can't even talk. We're gonna check out ten WWE wrestlers who were intentionally buried on live TV, man. These situations, when it does happen, it gotta obviously be some backstage politicking and backstage issues because if they choose to just bury you on live TV. It has to be a reason. Sometimes it can be a punishment. Sometimes it could be because you work for another company and now you in this company, so we're gonna bury you to let you know that you weren't as good over there. It's a multitude of things. A lot of times I think it play egos get involved. But we're gonna check this out. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K. Let's do this thing. Now, there have been times throughout WWE history where wrestlers done something wrong in the eyes of WWE management, specifically former WWE chairman Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. But instead of punishing that specific wrestler internally with a fine or suspension, WWE will outright bury that wrestler on screen by having them lose either a high profile match or lose in an outright random or embarrassing manner. Yeah. More often than not, the reason that the wrestler was buried is nonsensical. But this was unfortunately a common yep. practice in the old era of WWE. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times WWE purposely buried a wrestler on television. Unfortunately, stuff like this can happen, has happened. Especially with Vince in control. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily Didn't wrestling videos. Didn't want to cross Vince McMahon, bro. Follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk. Even if it was an accident. Channel. Incredible. Number 10, MVP. Oh. When MVP first arrived in WWE, he was presented as an instant main eventer. Facts. MVP had a great look and had a tremendous Balling, presence as yeah. an on-screen character, and he would soon embark on one of the longest US title reigns in WWE history, as well as take part in an oddball tag team with Matt Hardy, which was universally acclaimed by fans. <laughs> However, upon eventually losing the US title, MVP would be completely buried. He would go on to have an extensive losing streak, which completely killed every ounce of credibility he had. Mm -hmm. According to reports at the time, it was speculated that MVP was being buried due to the potential contract issues. Whatever the reason though, it dimmed MVP's spark so much so that he departed WWE in 2010, mm -hmm. seeking to work in other promotions such as New Japan Pro Wrestling. Number 9. Raven Raven was a wrestler who had a you know ton of potential. You know what's about that too? The, the crazy thing about that whole situation is just like, bro, MVP was, he he was a, 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 a top guy, mid-card to top guy. People, you know, knew who he was and, you know, appreciated, you know, for, you know, what he was doing in the ring and outside the ring. He was really heavily used on SmackDown. And once he lost that United States Championship, it was like, damn, bro, he just, he went from that, from all the way up here to just... It just, his stock just plummeted. Specifically during the Attitude Era. Unfortunately, Vince McMahon never seemed to get what Raven could bring to the table, and mm -hmm. one specific incident resulted in McMahon deciding to bury Raven on WWE television. According to Bubba Ray Dudley on Busted Open Radio, McMahon opted to bury Raven because he interrupted him whilst he was eating. He revealed wow. Raven wanted to present Vince with an idea. Well, he sits down and Raven starts pitching him this idea. And the idea is built around the movie Seven with the Seven Deadly Sins. And Raven's got page after page after page of things that he wrote down. And he goes, you know, uh, uh, you know, Vince, can I pitch you a story? And Vince did not want to hear it. He just wanted to eat. And he goes, yeah, go ahead. And Raven starts, you know, reading off the paperwork and he goes, all right, you know, the character Raven, you know, set back, you know, 10 years ago, blah, blah, blah. And Vince stops him and he goes, wait a minute. Blah, blah, blah. You really need to tell me you wrote blah, blah, blah on the paper? Wow. You interrupt me while I'm eating to tell me blah, blah, blah. Why don't you pitch me the right way? Wow. The former hardcore champion would proceed to be relegated to Sunday Night Heat. McMahon's opinion of Raven has been officially been diminished to a point of no return. Damn. Eight, that's Cedric cold. Alexander. A former WWE chairman, Vince McMahon, previously loathed when wrestlers deviated away from his direct orders. In 2019, it was reported that Alexander had refused to follow a direct order from McMahon. And according to Kurt Angle, this was the beginning of the end of Alexander's WWE career. Oh, well, that would Following make this sense. Active Defiance from Alexander, McMahon would insist that he would be buried in a definitive manner in a match with AJ Styles. 
this resentment McMahon felt towards Alexander would continue in 2020 when he was removed from the Hurt Business, as McMahon didn't want him receiving a huge push. Damn. This was a decision which received extensive criticism, as Alexander was delivering arguably the best work of his entire career as part of the group. Number 7. Brian Kendrick and Paul oh, London. This is really interesting. I'm not sure how true a lot of these stories are, but they definitely sound believable that... You know, I think we just watched a recent video where we we're talking about Cedric Alexander, you know, and, you know, what, you know, him not really getting a push. Well, now we see why. Once again, you disobey Vince or you piss him off in some form or fashion, there's a good chance he won't fire you. He'll do something damn near worse. Kill your, like, your your hype. So if you do want, if you do leave, it, you know, it's going to make it harder for people to want to see you because, well, one, they haven't seen you. On the September 17th, 2007 edition of Raw, Triple H would soundly defeat Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch in a handicap match. This was a questionable decision as the game defeated one of the WWE's top teams by himself and yeah. getting the win with a spinebuster didn't exactly give any credibility towards Cade and Murdoch. Nevertheless, it was the post-match shenanigans that caused controversy. Following Triple H's win, Carlito would perform a run-in to attack the game, and this was when Brian Kendrick and Paul London would run in to make the save. For whatever reason, Triple H performed a pedigree on both men, to the confusion of fans in attendance. This completely buried one of WWE's most beloved tag teams and made them look like idiots in the process. The common belief was that this was punishment for London infamously breaking character and grinning during the infamous segment a few months earlier in which Vince wow. McMahon's limo exploded. Number 6. Finn Balor The TLC 2007 I don't remember them as a tag team on SmackDown. They were fucking fantastic, but damn. Wow. He smiled in there during the segment and he's like, alright bro, I'm about, to, I'm, about, I'm about to show you. Damn, it was one of the finest nights of Finn Balor's career. Balor would defeat AJ Styles in a classic matchup, but the next night, Balor was completely buried in a match by Kane. Kane would defeat Balor with three consecutive choke slams, and fans were quick to question what on earth WWE were thinking. Now, it was worth noting that Kane was semi retired at this point, and he didn't need a win of this nature, especially yeah. against someone as popular as Finn Balor. According to the reports at the time, Vince McMahon was angry with Balor following the TLC pay per view. Following Balor's match with AJ Styles, oh, Balor and AJ would perform a too sweet, that. but this wasn't in the initial script. Yeah. Going off script in this manner was a big no-no under Vince McMahon's watch, so McMahon decided to punish Balor with the unceremonious loss to Kane. Number four. Bro, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. That is like, it's not even that big of a deal. I don't know why someone, I don't know why he did that. That, if anything, it enhances the overall story of the match if people know their relations you know, them, them, you know, how close they were and the, the faction that they're referencing with the two sweet, click, you know, uh, the hand gesture. Like, it, it, it enhances it. It makes people appreciate it more. Why would Vince get upset about that? I don't know. I, I don't think that's something to punish somebody for. Five, Karrion Cross. NXT, specifically Triple H, I definitely want to know Karrion what happened Cross with him. Is a legitimate, credible star on the brand. However, upon Cross being called up to the main roster, yep. Vince McMahon seemingly did everything in his power to kill Cross's mystique oh, and outright bury him mass. as a character. Look at Cross that. would debut on the main roster in the summer of 2021, and he would lose his first match on TV against Jeff Hardy. Cross was NXT champion at the time, so this was a dire representation of yeah, that Cross and the NXT made no brand. Sense. It was reported that McMahon wanted to send a message to NXT talents that he didn't care about the brand. This is why he was burying him. That's this was up, backwards bro. logic, and it was almost as if NXT wasn't a part of WWE. Cross so would rough. eventually be released by WWE as McMahon claimed he couldn't get over. Thankfully, Triple H would bring him back in the summer of 2022, and Cross has been presented with credibility and respect ever since. Mm -hmm. Number four, Triple H. Now, believe it or not, there was actually a point in WWE. If you guys don't know, Triple H definitely at one point got in trouble with Vince for doing some things he wasn't going to do. If you guys don't know the story, you'll you'll understand what he got in trouble for and why. Uh, subsequently, he ended up getting uh, buried on live television. It be history where Vince McMahon decided to bury Triple H. This took place following yep. the infamous curtain call at Madison Square Garden, which saw the click break kayfabe to embrace each other in the ring. Click members Kevin Nash and Scott Hall couldn't be punished by WWE as it were WCW bound, and in relation to Shawn Michaels, he was virtually untouchable, and this yeah. meant it all fell on the game. Triple H was initially booked to win the 1996 King of the Ring, but these creative plans were cancelled yep. instantly, 
and instead the prestigious crown was awarded to Stone Cold Steve Which Austin. Which is crazy. Triple H was when you think about it, if he was selected to win, then we may not have gotten the Stone Cold, you know, like movement really getting on the way. That's how crazy wrestling can sometimes be. Someone can get in trouble. Stone Cold takes that spot. And now we get the infamous 316 promo. And then we get things rolling. And if Triple H doesn't get in trouble here, we may not even have that moment. That's interesting. Was set for a main event level push, but he was relegated to the lower mid card for the next few months, working with talents that certainly weren't on his level. Some wrestling personalities such as Jim Ross and Jim Cornette have gone on record to state that Triple H shouldn't have been punished for his involvement in the curtain call. Of course. It was just a load of political nonsense. Number three, Rey Mysterio. Now this At is WrestleMania interesting. At WrestleMania 22 in 2006, Vince McMahon reluctantly agreed to allow Rey Mysterio to win the world title. At this point in time, McMahon had no faith in Mysterio as a main event level star as he yeah. believed he was simply too small to be a top guy in the company. Although McMahon agreed to make Mysterio world champion, Mysterio's world title reign was a disaster. It was. So McMahon would bury Mysterio every yep. chance he could get. During his reign, he would lose to the likes of the great Carly, yep. Mark Henry, Finley, and yep. RVD. McMahon was taking immense pride in burying his own champion, which was a complete waste of time and resources. If McMahon devoted time into making Mysterio a credible champion, then he could have had a fantastic reign. But McMahon refused to put his stubborn opinions on hold for the greater mm -hmm. good of the company. That sounds Number exactly two, right. Bray Wyatt. Oh, when Bray Wyatt was released from WWE yeah. 2021, we know all about this one. Vince McMahon this had situation. a personal vendetta against Wyatt. The two would often get into heated arguments. It was believed that McMahon's dislike came from him taking issues with Wyatt, calling out poor WWE creative, and McMahon responded by burying Wyatt in matches and even to his face by making negative comments about his physique. Mm -hmm. The greatest example of Wyatt being buried in WWE oh, was back brother. in 2020 when they did the unthinkable. They would have Goldberg defeat Wyatt to win the Universal title. Wyatt looked completely incompetent in the match, and it could be argued that the loss to Goldberg killed every ounce of credibility. In my opinion, once this happened, he was done. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, it was over. It was done. I was like, oh, well. Even though they had the, the Firefly Fun, Firefly Fun, uh, Fun House, I think that's how you say it, Firefly Fun, uh, Fun House match or uh, with John Cena, I think that was, you know, that was cool, but the damage was already done. The Mystique Wyatt's popular Fiend character had. This completely deflated fans, and it was clear from this point onwards that McMahon was never going to give Wyatt the appreciation he deserved. Nope. And number one, Dean Ambrose. Mm. In January 2019, WWE made the bizarre and rare move to announce that Dean Ambrose will be leaving the company in April. Mm -hmm. Fans believe this to be a storyline due to the unusual nature of the announcement, but it was in fact legitimate, and Ambrose was actually leaving the company. WWE would present Ambrose in a weird manner following the announcement, and it was apparent that they were out right yep. burying him. Ambrose would begin on a program with Nia Jax, oh, which was yeah. clearly designed to make him look weak, and WWE were even going to deliver an Ambrose versus Nia Jax match, but it was eventually cancelled. Ambrose would discuss WWE, specifically Vince McMahon burying him during his final few months in the company during an appearance on the Talkers Jericho podcast, as a former WWE champion revealed. Because I'm hoping that he just writes me off TV that night. Yeah. He's like, yeah, and we'll just finish up at Mania, you know, and whatever. And he's like, hey, we're not going to bury you on the way out or anything like that. And I went, actually, it's funny you mentioned that because that's the reason I stormed in here. Because um, it looks to me like that's exactly what the f*** you're doing. And he goes, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. But they have it, folks. That's how, yeah, that, that's, I remember that, that, that just was just so fucking weird. But once again, this proves egos, politics, ministry, man. If he feels some type of way about you, if you don't want to re-sign, if you're leaving, all these other things, you don't listen to him, or even you happen to annoy, annoy him while he's eating some food, there's a good chance your character all of a sudden start losing matches that they shouldn't be losing or getting buried in segments that shouldn't even be happening. So that it, 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 it can it can and has happened. Hopefully we don't see as much of that going forward with Triple H. I think that's just bad just being that's bad as a booker like you take away put your feelings and pride aside and put on a good cohesive show that's that's really what it should be but this man was he was at the top who could tell him what to do you know so comment down below let me know 
which one of these stories did you not know was actually a, a, a thing you didn't know they got buried for some of the most ridiculous stuff that happened in these uh these uh in this particular video and if you know any other stories of people getting buried for dumb reasons live on television let me know it doesn't even have to be on a uh wwe it can be AEW or any other promotion let me know i would like to hear you guys uh stories on these other situations but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k appreciate y'all keeping me see you on the next one peace